Good morning, all the speakers. Hope you had breakfast. And don't be nervous, all the best. Good morning, thank you. Maybe we can take a picture of speakers and us first since there's no participants so that later on we don't have to take the speaker's picture again. Can uh, speakers turn on your camera? Don't be nervous, all the best. I'm um, sorry, please, please give me some time to download the background picture. I'm sorry. No, no problem. I'm um, high. All right, I'm okay to go. Uh, 
yeah we i have to adjust the layout first all right um emily are you ready yeah okay uh ready three two one small another one <coughs> Three, two, one, small. All right, thank you so much. Emily, are you ready? Yeah, okay. Uh, ready? Three, two, one, small. Building your business online? Go to Wix.com and get your site up and running. Good morning and welcome everyone. We'll be waiting for another until 10.35 to start our session, yeah? Waiting for another until 10.35 to start our session, yeah? our session yeah start our session yeah A very good morning to all the speakers and participants. My name is Siru, and I'll be your moderator for today. First of all, I would like to invite, uh, I would like to welcome all of our, uh, all of you to join us today for the second part of the Choices Ahead workshop. And today reaches our day two, which is um, the last day for the scholarship sharing session. So just to let you know, we are also live streaming this session in our YouTube channel. So you can search it 
by uh, you can search uh, do this in action Malaysia to see to watch all the sessions and uh, ne next slide please so there are several rules to follow during our sessions. First of all, every participants, please use a mutual microphone throughout the session, except for speakers who will be presenting. Next, you're encouraged to turn on your camera if you're comfortable and not shy to do it. And feel free to ask questions on our Google Meet comment section and YouTube live chat section. And we'll also have a Slido where you can scan the QR code to drop down any questions that you have. The speakers will answer your questions once they end their presentation. Also, please ask questions politely and be mindful of your words. Last but not least, let us enjoy the workshop. Next slide, please. So this is our QR code. You can probably scan um, at here and then after that, if you have any questions, you can just drop down in our Slido. Also, this is the scholarship bodies that we will be introducing for this session. Unfortunately, there is a speaker, Xing Ning from Yayasan KLK. She couldn't attend because of some personal issues. We are so sorry and we sincerely apologize to any participant that come for Yayasan KLK. So we will have Sinchu, Sinchu Education Fund, Gamuda Scholarship, as well as Yayasan Saimdabi Excellent Scholarship Program for this session. For our presentation agenda, we'll have this contents being presented based on what speakers would like to share about their thoughts and also um, their experience. So without further ado, let us invite the first speaker, Emily Lau Yishi, for, uh, to introduce about Sinchu Education Fund. So we'll be passing the mic to her. Hi everyone, can you guys hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Hi, my name is Emily. Uh, my name is Emily Law, not Emily Lau, but it's okay. Uh, I don't mind being called Emily Lau, but uh, in proper term, it's Emily Law. Right, so maybe I can just quickly introduce myself. Right, so I'm Emily Law. I'm currently 22 years old and I'm in my final year studies in, as a psychology student in Tunggu Abdul Rahman University Management of Technology and technology. Yeah, so in short, it's TAR-UMT, or previously known as TAR-UC. Uh, right now, I'm doing my internship in L'Oreal, and after my internship, I will technically a graduate student, which I am currently is already, because uh, my internship is supposed to end by 20th of May, which is yesterday. So currently, I'm a graduate. So um, how did I continue on my study? So I actually grew up in a um, not very financial well family so uh, that's got my family to think about like how, how do we fund my education so I have a brother before me and uh, my brother actually did the same thing as me which is diploma and then degree so in diploma we both me and my brother we had uh, the TAR loan in our uni which is a zero interest uh, loan so we think that it's better than PTPTN hence the reason why we took the TAR loan because there is no interest free uh, it is interest free and is uh there is a timetable like scheduled to payment for us. So after moving on after diploma, we thought of trying off a uh, scholarship and we my brother stumbled upon this uh Singshu Education Fund. So in Chinese it's the Singshu Rupao Fund. Uh, in English this is what it's called. So moving to, on to the next slide. So how do we come about to know this is that it's actually on my university um, financial aid website and it is actually a very, very general scholarship. It does not have any bond, it does not have anything, but it's only for people who are financial needy. So the general requirements to be eligible for this scholarship is that you need to be a Malaysian born after 
1st January 1998. And uh, you must be active in your uh, extracurricular or any sports. And if you have this scholarship already, you cannot be bonded to any financial aid. Uh, I'm not sure if you can have PTPTN or not because I did not do that. But I'm assuming it's no, you cannot have any financial aid. Uh, but it says to be bonded, right? So it maybe I think PTPTN is okay. So I'm not so sure. And uh, of course that you will be interviewed by your university management and not from not people from Singcho. Okay, so what are the academic requirements for this? The academic requirement is that you need to of course, get your final result. You cannot use your like mock test, trial results, or those. You must have the final results. And then you must at least meet the minimum criteria of your university. So, for example, if you are an SPM student and you have your SPM results already, and then, for example, you want to get into like, let's say UCSI, right? And then, for example, you want to study like um, public relations, for example, you need to like, I don't know what's the requirement, but I'm just giving out example, right? For example, public relation, you need to have at least maybe three credit and then maybe like B for English, for, for example. So then you need to meet that minimum requirement to get into that course, to also get into this um, scholarship. Okay, moving on next one. Okay, so what does this um, fee cover? It actually covers all your tuition fee, um, except all the miscellaneous fee. So in my uni, we have three semesters. So the first semester is the one that I have to give all the administration fee, laboratory fee, insurance fee, right? So for that one, I probably need to pay around one or 200 only. And then the rest of the fee of the, the credit hour of my course will be covered in this tuition fee. So I do not need to pay. And this will go all the way until I finish my degree. But uh, one thing good about this, about this scholarship fund that I will recommend everyone to apply is that if you failed your paper, if you if you did anything bad or anything, like you failed a paper, right, or you receipt or you repeat, it is okay, as long as you still remain your grades. So the minimum grade in my school is two point seven five. Yeah. So to me, it, it was an uh, easy thing. So uh, I, uh, it wasn't my in my worry that I could not keep up with this scholarship lah. So it, it's a very simple borderline pass so just need uh, so you need to follow your school minimum requirement to uh, maintain it and let's say if i fail so let's just say if i fail a paper right but if my C gpa doesn't drop lesser than 2.75 i will still maintain this scholarship but in in our in my uni i need to pay for that receipt paper or that repeat paper right so that will not be covered i need to pay them on, on my behalf on myself right so uh that is all and then for example, in my uni as well, like internship, <laughs> that's a credit hour as well. So I technically still need to pay for my internship, which is ridiculous, but it also covers in this course as well. So uh, also another thing about this um, scholarship is that if, you def if, if you're a different student or you defer or you drop out, then uh, no, they won't, they won't cover you back. And I think you need to pay if I'm not wrong, but... Uh, because I, I didn't thought of dropping out or anything, so I didn't really do much research. But I remember um, dropping out, like, you need to pay back, pay them back or something like that. So it's not an option for you to drop out if you decided to take on this scholarship. Can I move on to the next slide? <coughs> okay, so then how do you apply? So um, you can go to this website that I show here. You can just copy the link. I'll give you two seconds. One, two. Okay, so once you go on to this link, what you need to do is that you actually need to create an account. Um, and then that you have to, they will have a PDF link. And then you need to press, then they will tell you all the documents that needs to be done. And uh, the reason why the steps seem so simple here is because in that PDF file, they have already st stated step by step on what you should click and what you should do and what you should download and get. So, okay, so... Personally, what I did was that I went to the account. I went to the account uh, website and then I created an account. I downloaded the PDF and I, through that PDF, I gathered all my documents. So documents needed are like your IC, set, um, IC photostat uh, or like anything that showcase that, like your salary, your parents' salary sleep, your electric bills, uh, these kind of things. And in my case, I had, uh, 
other documents as well, like police report and things like that, or like divorce paper or anything like that, right? So you can also attach that, or maybe death certificate as well, you can also attach that. Anything that makes your case stronger, you can also attach that. So once you have all these um, documents, what you need to do is that you need to go to your university. I think it's the student affair department, right? To get them stamped and say that these are all certified. Once these are all certified, so what I did was that I actually take a picture of it, like in a document format. And then I went to this website and I start filling up all my, the columns. And then I also uploaded all this uh, attachment. And then once you submit that, uh, and remember to press save. And after that, just submit. And that's all you do. Literally nothing. And then after that, uh, depends on different uni, but in my university, university there was a interview, but this interview mainly just to assess what I said was true. So they were asking me like, uh, what my, my, what my mom is working on? Um, how do I normally fund myself? So they will start asking you a lot. In my school, they asked me a lot of questions like, then what car do I have? Uh, what phone do I use? What laptop do I use? Just to really assess on my finance, my family's financial. So I also um, explain as well. So personally, I felt like you don't have to prepare those normal interview questions. You don't have to really prepare that. But I think you can prepare yourself like, why do you want to study this? Why would you need this education? Why is it for? So I remember sharing about wanting to have this um, fun so that I can, you know, focus on my education and then after that get into a good job yeah just those standard answers but other than that there's, there was nothing much and previously before the pandemic it was actually physical so um, my parents were very concerned about my dyed hair or my color color hair because we need to seem very poor right so cannot have dyed hair cannot have everything <laughs> yeah but i think that time when when i did it it was on online and it was by my faculty um unit lecturers yeah so i i think it's varies differently in every university um the university that covers actually are uh, a lot of them so you guys can actually check the website out to check if your university is listed and if your course is listed as well and i think you can have a few choices like a first or two choices of university as well to the university that you want and um just an additional um yeah sharing is that this scholarship it's very similar to the if you heard of the star uh the star scholarship fund uh i think quote foundation as well it's actually quite similar to that yeah but um i didn't really research on too much on the others because this is the one that i got so i actually applied for nanyang Xingzhou, and the star which is very very similar and my brother actually got nanyang and i got Xingzhou. yeah so uh I don't know how they actually select the people, but um, I, all I can say is try, and if you get it, then you get it. Because I actually have friends who tried, but they didn't get it. So I'm not sure how they actually do the selection. So I, I think it's also making your, um, how, how financial needy are you, are you really are. And this is just my personal opinion. I think that if you can speak Chinese or if you are from a Chinese school, then it actually makes a difference. But this is just my opinion. It's because um, this is Xingzhou, right? So, and they have like Chinese words. So I'm assuming that they would like want to um, fund um, Chinese speaking people and things like that to help out in the Chinese community. But this is just my opinion. Uh, if you're not from the Chinese community as well or not, not Chinese or anything, I, I would still strongly recommend to try it out. So uh, moving on to the next slide. Okay, so the challenges that I face or like how do I overcome this, right? It's because like I mentioned just now, after submitting, there is nothing that I can do. So I just wait patiently. Yeah, so I think it's learning how to wait patiently during this time. And I think what you can do while you're waiting patiently is to also follow up with your university um, people who is handling this. So I had the email to... Um, the person who is handling this financial aid. So I just uh, asked and like, hey, uh, how, how is the process already? That's all. And one of the other challenges, which I think it's a necessary thing, is to I have to go through the interview. So the interview, it's not like your job interview kind of thing, but it's more to getting to know you, getting to know your inspiration, your aspiration, this kind of thing. Lah, right? So I think these are the two main things. Other than that, throughout my whole scholarship journey or throughout my studies, 
um, there weren't any events that I needed to attend. There were no bonds. There were nothing. And I think it was also because it was the pandemic. So to me, it was uh, very simple and easy. And how the payment come through is that it was straight away direct to my school. It's, it's direct to my uni, right? So I did not even have to look into the transaction history. I did not even have to look into all that. Or I just need to be concerned and be mindful about um, paying for my miscellaneous fees, lah, which is in my uni, it was around 100 or 200 per year. So that's a little bit from mine. Moving on to the next slide. Okay, so uh, again, coming back to why you should do it, why you should just try, is that uh, I'm sure many of you don't know like oh, what scholarship there is, if I can get it or not. So um, I think personally for myself, I would just ask you to just try for all of them, right? Because in benefit, you may even get free education. Like in my case, I get free education, right? I actually tried for my SPM. Like after SPM, I tried for my diploma, but I didn't get it. So I have no choice but to do to take up the TA loan. And then when I did my degree, I just tried again. And uh, I, I get it in, in the end. So it actually helps to, like moving on, on the second point, is to actually help lessen my financial burden, my debts. Because... If I borrow PTPTN or the TA loan again, so in my TA loan, in my diploma, I actually already borrowed 20K. And in this of my degree, it will be total around of, I think I calculated at that moment was 25 to 29K. So if I borrow money again, then probably it will be like around 40K in total or 50K in total that I need to pay after graduating, right? But I just tried to apply this and I got it. So in the end, I... I don't need to worry about my my degree and I just only need to worry that after working, I only need just to just pay that 20K without interest. Okay, so how does this uh, really impact my life after applying? Is that it really helps me to lessen my burden. I never have to worry about needing to pay my fee. Never thought about it. Just I always try to just look, oh, need to pay fee. But it's already done and dusted, right? And then it also helped me that um, in my career, then... I don't have so much debt. So I don't want to be graduating with like a 50K debt. And then when you want to buy a house, you want to buy a car, you want to get married, have baby, these kind of things. And then it adds on to that burden, right? So um, I'm just really grateful that I actually applied, just even though I'm, I was just trying at that moment. And then I got in so that now my debt is just 20K. Yeah. So moving on. Yeah. So is there any questions? Or am I going too fast? No, I think it's all quite clear. And then I can like roughly picture of the whole application. So uh, thank you, Emily Law. Sorry for pronouncing oh, it okay. wrongly. No um, that's so there is one question I... from here. Does SCE scholarship sponsor for local and overseas or local only? I think from what I saw on the list, from what I know, I may be wrong. So you guys can actually read the website more because it's very, very detailed on the website. But I didn't do so much reading. <laughs> I'm sorry on my end. But if I'm not wrong, it's only local, but it's like um, local and private uni. It's all, like all together. Uh, because I remember seeing there is Hero World. I remember seeing UCSI as well in the list. Um, Segi, Help, all those. I, I saw all that uh, uni in that list. It's a very, very long list. But I think for like UPM, those UM, then I, I didn't really pay much detail, but I'm assuming it's also there on that list. So what uni am I studying right now is I'm studying TAR UMT. So Tunku Abdul Rahman University Management and Technology. Uh, in Chinese, Lamana, not Utah, okay? Yeah. Yeah, so I think you guys can just press in the link. You were saying, sorry? Uh, is it group interview? Uh, it's not. It's an individual interview. Uh, they do cover like some... I, I think these are China Uni. So they do cover like Nanfang and Southern University College. But you do have your common, um, even BAC, APU, they are all here. And they 
I think they mainly cover university that are here in um, Malaysia. So it seemed to me that they these are all local university, and there are no no UM, no UPM, no don't have all those. Yeah. Are um, you bonded or any follow up event required? No, I'm not bonded to anything, nothing at all. Um, I mean, following in my brother's footstep, my brother had the Nanyang scholarship. He was not bonded as well. He, there's nothing he need to do. He graduated then done. Um, nothing, no, not even anything. But uh, follow up event, I don't remember having all those as well. But I, I remember clearly back um, when I was still in uni that I, th I think it was after the pandemic or was it was before the pandemic. I'm not sure already. But I had this event and it was just a random uni event about telling me about my school, something like that. One hour talk, but I cannot remember is it for the scholarship? Like they asked all the scholarship people to go or it's because I'm the Talon recipient. That's why I need to go. But I think in my memory, I did not need to go for any event. So I basically not need to think about it as well. Yeah, not bonded. Not all bonded. right. I think that uh, I hope that answer your question. And how about Nanyang? Is it? Like almost the same as Sinchu. Yeah, yeah. The Nanyang, the Star, and Sinchu is very, very the same. It's mm -hmm. just maybe the um, requirement may be a little bit different, but from what I know, it's quite similar because my brother also said just don't drop more than two point seven five. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. I think that's quite clear. Oh, another question: When did you apply for the scholarship? Is it the same time period as the SPM leavers, like after SPM results release? Hmm. Okay, so for this one, uh, I think uh, now for this year, it has, it has already opened 1st of April, 2020 for this year. So, um, for example, if you're going from SPM to like, let's say diploma or foundation, then you, uh, the, the, date, the deadline is that once your SPM result is out, 14 day upon the announcement of your re result. So, and then... For example, my diploma come out, my diploma result came out like let's just say next, last week, right? Then the application finishing will be af 14 days after uh my 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 university um result is out. So because like I said, so how does this actually work, right? Maybe I can share a little bit more. How does this actually work is that Sing Cho will actually give uh some of money to your university. So the, all the requirements, all the process and everything is actually by your university who selects this. But Singjo helped to, I, if I'm not wrong, they actually help to screen through and then pass it on to the uni. But other than that, everything is just uni. I never once had to go to the Singjo office. I never had to deal anything with the Singjo people. But when I, when I was offered, they just gave me the letter to sign. That's all. To say that I got this scholarship. But uh, the time period, like to confirm again, the time period is 14 day deadline after your result is out. So the timing will be different because it's on your university. All right. Then how about the waiting time for like to get how if you are uh, selected for the scholarship? Mm, I think for this, I Actually, honestly speaking, I cannot really, really remember because it's like two years ago already. But I think what I did was that I, because I mentioned just now, I had the email to the financial aid person. So I just keep texting her and say, how is the process? How is the process? When will they finalize? And I think the price process was actually quite fast. Like, I think they told me like, oh, they will look into it next week. And then like five days later, they then say, oh, okay, uh, this is this. Emily, can you, I don't have this detail. Can you give me this? So it's all mainly dealing with your own university. And I, I personally think if you try to follow up enough, you may actually get the attention for them to look into your case to see if you're deserving of this. Yeah. So I think you can just follow up. Um, so don't worry too much because it's all mainly on your university. To me, I feel like if I deal with my personality, my university, it's easier to deal with other people, lah, like external people, right? So I just uh, went to my university and then like, oh, can I know more? When is it telling me? Because I, had a lot, I remember having an issue like, 
oh, my diploma is finishing already, but my degree is like starting soon already. Then how, then if the degree result come out already, then how like I had those questions as well. But I just refer all that to that person in my university. And since it's following university time and their management. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, you, Emily Law. And <laughs> by the way, I like your hair. Yeah. Okay, so. thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you okay, so much uh, for sharing. I'll pass on to my next speaker, Vanessa. All right. Thank so you, Emily. <laughs> Vanessa, for uh, to talk about Gamuda Scholarship. I'll pass, uh, I'll pass the mic to you. Thank you so much, Zuru. Um, good morning, everybody. It is absolutely lovely to be here today. Um, my name is Vanessa. I'm a Gamuda scholar and an ecology and biodiversity student from University Malaya. Um, I do apologize in advance if I sound a bit nasally because I'm not feeling very well today, but I hope that it will all go well. Next slide, please. All right. So it is a pleasure to have the opportunity to share with you today and jumping right in, we'll be covering the general parts of the scholarship before moving on to my personal experience. And of course, if at any point you have a question, I want you to type it somewhere so I can address it at the end, okay? Right. The general requirements of the Gamuda Scholarship are that you have to be a Malaysian IC holder. You must be commencing or currently undergoing your first degree program. So what that means is you just need to be doing your degree for the first time. Like you're not going for a second round or maybe you dropped out and then you reapplied. Um, that's a no-go. And you have to be willing to serve the Gamuda group for a specified term upon graduation. Then for the academic requirements are that you need a minimum of three A's or a CGPA of 3.4 in STPM or equivalent. So that includes A-levels, matriculation, foundation, diploma, UEC, OSMED, etc. Of course, you are required to have a strong command of English and the documents that you will need when you're applying include your schooling documents, all of the certificates of achievement, your parental income, as well as the employment certs. However, I do wish to let you guys know that if you do not reach the academic requirements, you are still really encouraged to apply because Gamuda does not only look at your academic achievement, but also holistically at your abilities and experiences as well. Next slide, please. So compared to many scholarships out there, Gamuda actually covers quite a large range of degrees, I would say, but not as general as um, like Emily's one just now. So you can see that there are, you know, the very typical degrees. There's engineering, um, quantity surveying, architecture, psychology, finance, business. And it also includes very niche degrees, including environmental science and sustainability, Last horticulture, and then biodiversity the management. So compared to many course, scholarships out there, Gamuda is actually not listed here. You are also highly encouraged to email them and ask them if it's advisable for you to apply. Um, so if, for example, law is not listed in here, but there are actually quite a few Gamuda scholars with a law background because most companies require a corporate law arm. So we do encourage you to directly email them and they'll let you know if it's advisable for you to apply. Right, next slide. So for the coverage, it actually covers quite well. Um, it covers everything, basically. Your tuition fees, right at the start of the scholarship, you will be putting the PIC from Gamuda covers in contact with the PIC and ask them from if your university so for for you to apply. So, they directly connect with the HCP of UM and all of the payment goes through there. Like I don't have to do anything at all. The only thing I am that I receive um, so is I'm for being example, CC'd in the email um, for the invoicing. Everything. And for the expenses, Gamuda gives you monthly allowance, they give you a living allowance, and they give you book and laptop allowance, which basically honestly covers most fees? of everything. I don't have to worry about um, potentially getting a part-time job or right at the start well, of the it scholarship, gives me the freedom you to pursue what I want. I'm for being example, CC'd especially in the since form. I'm a first year student, you you actually have this choice where you can either go and do a part-time job and earn additional income, or you could use the time to explore your campus and explore different things while you're still young. And I'm very grateful for that freedom. Next slide. All right, so here is the application process. Um, 
it is not very easy, I would say, and it can be quite competitive, but all in all, I would say it is definitely worth it. There are five stages to the application process. The first one is the online application. Um, I see the link has already been sent in there. So you'll be required to fill in all of your information, uh, all of your information on your family and submit all of the relevant documents and provide your resume. Um, I would say that it is quite essential that you make sure that your resume is complete and neat because uh, the amount of applicants that they receive each year is increasing over time. And if your resume is not like at, le at the very least possible, I do not think that you will get through the first online application. So make sure that your resume is complete and neat. For the second task, it is also online and the task will be released to you through email should you make it to this stage. So at this point, they are not actually like personally messaging you. It is automated. So they'll just send you a message. If you get through, then you get the message and you get to access these tasks. So there are a few tasks um, inside. I, I won't tell you about it because I do not think I'm allowed to tell you about it. But yeah, be prepared. Then for the third stage, it is the cognitive and behavioral assessment. I have no advice for you other than to be yourself and to practice. Um, so you will be told, you will be told which assessments you are taking in that email, and you can actually track down free versions of those specific assessments online. So I would say, don't pretend to be someone that you're not. Just be yourself, and it will show true. And doing the online free versions is just to get you more used to the format. And it's not going to actually change the results of anything. And for the fourth stage, it is the physical scholarship workshop. So this is when you are required to go to Manara Gamuda and you will have the opportunity to work in groups. Um, it's called a scholarship workshop, but at the same time, it is an assessment stage. So. While you're there, you'll be getting the opportunity to work with all kinds of different people, but they are all very capable for them to have reached the fourth stage. They're all extremely capable. And I just want to tell you, be friendly, take the chance to get to know these people. And, you know, again, be yourself. Take the chance, if you can, to take the lead and especially work very well with the people around you. It is definitely an added plus if your team can shine through during the workshop. If your entire team can shine during the workshop, it actually shows that you are a very good team player, which is a very essential, essential um, trait that you want to have. Um, during the scholarship workshop, I actually had five people in my team and we really shone through and actually three of us got through out of so many groups and so many slots for the scholarship workshop. Three out of five managed to get through, so it's really important. And for the fifth stage, it is the final interview. Um, the final interview is actually not, on, it's not physical. The reason that it's not physical is because usually during the final interview, we've already reached the stage where a lot of the students have already started school, especially the ones who are doing overseas. So. In terms of accessibility, physical final interviews are quite not it. So usually the final interview is online. For preparation for the final interview, I would say do your research. Really, really, really do your research. Know what the company is doing. Know the core values of the company. Know the value that the company brings to the market. And if you can, you should imagine where you fit into the company in the future. The final interview for me was very eye-opening, I would say. And it was, very, it was very specific. For everybody, the final interview will be a very different experience because they will, they will source in different experts from different branches of Gamuda that, spe that are specifically related to the degree that you are taking so that they can gauge you properly. It's not a general thing. It's actually very specific. All right, next slide, please. All right. Um, so imagine coming from a strict Asian family where the only careers that you have ever considered are being a doctor, being a lawyer, being a consultant, or being an accountant. And imagine never 
daring to consider other options at all, but life throws you in a very strange direction. And imagine the absolute horror at realizing that you found what you wanted to do with your life and it wasn't within your parents' expectations. Because that is what happened to me. <laughs> and what if I told you that you could chase that dream safely with job security? So this is what the Gamuda Scholarship means to me. So for some background, I studied a diploma in forestry in UPM campus Bintulu. So I did it in Sarawak. I'm actually from KL. I graduated with a CGPA 4.0. I was also the best student for my faculty and the best student for my batch when I graduated. Then later on, I applied for UPU. And as I was applying for UPU, I had also applied for the Gamuda Scholarship. During my internship period, I believe that was my final semester during my diploma. I did very in-depth research on all relevant scholarships and I actually narrowed it down to three scholarships that I wanted to apply to because during my SPM times, um, after SPM, I actually applied for many, 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 many scholarships. But the problem with applying for many, many, many scholarships is that you actually burn out very fast. You won't be able to give the value that you really are into every single application. So I do recommend that you you know, narrow down the things that you want and put all of your heart and effort into those. And of course, above all, the Gamuda Scholarship was actually my first choice due to what I wanted to do in the future. Taking a diploma in forestry in and of itself, it's a very, it's a very niche, it's a very niche experience, I would say. And the fact that my first choice was to do science in ecology and biodiversity from UM, like most people in UM don't even know this degree exists. So it was all very, very scary to me. I was waiting for my UPU results at that point of time. Um, at that point of time, I got through to the workshop and the final interview. So I went through the final interview and I was still waiting for the UPU results. I had no idea if I could secure the scholarship and I had no idea if I could secure the first choice because I was given a conditional offer. If I got my UPU first choice, then I would be tied to the Gamuda scholarship. Meaning the Gamuda scholarship was already on the table for me before the UPU results even came out. So that was the most scary thing of the entire thing. Um, during the application, it was scary as well because I was doing my internship at Bako National Park and the internet was terrible, technical issues were everywhere and at that point of time, my laptop might broke down. So when I was doing the online tasks where you have to submit video recordings, I actually had to edit all of my videos and input subtitles in the videos because of technical issues. And of course, why did I say yes to the Gamuda Scholarship? It's because of fit. Um, personally, and as well as with my career growth, I, I personally have aligned values with the values that Gamuda carries as a company. And I believe that if your core values together with the organization that you're working for are similar, you won't be too miserable in the future. Next slide. All right, so just some strategies and notes. The first one is don't underestimate the importance of the online application, because if you don't get through the online application, then it's all like, it's all for nothing. Pay attention to all of the details during your application and special attention should be given to streamlining your resume and producing good outcome for the task. For the second tip is for physical workshops. Take care of how you dress and how you portray yourself. And it is actually very important that prior to all of this, you need to be very self-aware of the person that you are and the person that you want to become. Because it is very important that you are able to showcase your most authentic self. And the last one is to do your research. As I said before, you need to know what the company does, what are the current projects, and what is the future directions of the companies. You need to know which ones are interesting to you and where you might fit in the future. Because the Gamuda Scholarship is a bonded scholarship. So if you cannot imagine or the idea of being bonded is something that or the idea of being bonded is something that you hate, then you know that this is not a good fit for you.
Next slide, please. Um, here's some optional advice. This is um, personal advice from me. So I usually follow up my interviews with a thank you note or an email because if you make it to the stage where you get to meet them in person, take the time to thank the interviewers or the team for having you. If you had a great time, feel free to say that. And, you know, mention something specific in the interview that you took away from it or that they mentioned so that they actually remember who you are. And, of course, practice often. If you're like me, you're a bit more introverted, you are not naturally good at interviews or talking to people impromptu, practicing and finding a strategy that works for you in most cases is worth investing your time in. Practice does not make perfect, but it does make better. So be confident in the best version of yourself. Next slide. Why you should apply? Okay, it provides you financial flexibility. Um, as I said before, the Gamuda Scholarship provides you more than enough throughout your study period and a lot of wiggle room for you to explore different experiences. Um, you also get opportunities to develop, to develop. As you can see, I have two points here. One is opportunities to develop now and one is opportunities to develop in the future. Right now, as a Gamuda Scholar, you will be inside the SEDP program, which stands for the Scholars Engagement and Development Program, where you have really, really fun chances to interact with the scholars from the past as well as you know your future scholars where you get to go into different kinds of workshops or you even get to go on field trips for example last round we had a field trip to Gamuda Cove and prior to that we had a workshop for um, communications and of course there are opportunities for you to develop in the future there are internships in your preferred areas and projects whenever available so, for example, I had an engineering friend who got the Gamuda Scholarship. And so she got the chance to work on the newly opened MRT Putrajaya line. And um, as you know, if you do your research into Gamuda, you will know that Gamuda is also uh, spreading internationally. You can indicate your interest as a scholar to do your internship overseas in whichever Gamuda branch that you want. But of course, that is subject to availability. Lah. And the fourth point is that you'll be bonded to a strong company. Logically speaking, it will be very beneficial for you that your first job right out of uni is with a good company. Gamuda provides well-rounded support and opportunities for all of their employees, which are applicable to you as well during your bond period. This also ensures that you have experience when you first enter the working world and actually you can read up on their on their employee benefits it's actually really not bad and lastly gabuda provides a very conducive growth environment they have genuine strong values that are practiced within the company and if these values align with yours you are likely to be a great fit um the reason i say that is because during the entire time the three four times that i had to go to Munara gabuda and i was speaking to the people there I really enjoyed my time and I enjoyed the interactions that I had with these people. Next slide. All right, so if you are ready to apply, the Gamuda Scholarship is open until 31st May, so you have another 10 days to apply if you wish to apply. So that is all from me. If you guys have any questions at all, do feel free to input it into Slido. Thank you. Thank you, Vanessa. That's very insightful. So here there are many questions. May I know what is the deadline? Uh, it's just mentioned it's 31st of May and 10 days ago. So if you wanna apply, please grab this opportunity. And another question is overseas scholarship provided? Um, um, yes, it is provided. And in fact, this is probably going to be one of the best opportunities for you. For my batch, I am aware that we have people who are being sponsored to enter the University of Cambridge as well as the University of Massachusetts. I cannot pronounce the word. We have we have overseas universities, private universities, as well as local universities. Yep, I hope that answered your question. And another uh, uh, question asking if you can elaborate your Specific. diploma and degree. Oh, very risky.
No, what is oh, okay. university of um, Massachusetts? That's a really nice question to have. And for my diploma, I actually applied through UPU, you know, because I came from government screen and I didn't I didn't really have the money to consider private education. So I was raised dead set on UPU and I thought that I would be able to get Asasi and matriculation based on my um based on my grades. My SPM was pretty good, but they gave me um UPM KB which is in Sarawak and so instead of going to UPM which is 15 minutes away from my house I ended up flying across the sea and going to Sarawak to study um a diploma in forestry is very very interesting you'll be exposed to many different subjects and it is actually not bad the reason that I chose to take the diploma even though it is two years which is longer than some people is that uh, you actually secure the chance to have two offers for your degree. So between my diploma and my degree, I actually had two offers. I had one offer for UM from UPU, and I had another secured placing in UPM for environmental technology, which was my first choice in UPM. Because when you, are, you study in diploma, you are automatically within the system and you are given priority for degree. So it's a pretty, it's a pretty smart choice la, academically. My degree is in science of ecology and biodiversity. It's parked under the Faculty of Science under the Institute of Biological Sciences. Um, generally, the only science that I don't learn about, I think, is physics. So I'm covering a lot of chemistry. I'm covering a lot of biology and um, very interesting topics like ecotoxicology, um, GIS, um, marine biology, parasitology, all of this like fun stuff. Like, and, um, I see. <laughs> I guess you're very interested in environmental kind of thing. Yes, yes. And what is the difficulty of the online test and the assessment? Um, I actually believe that the difficulty is relative to the person. So, for example, the online task for me was actually a video task. And that could be difficult for some people, especially people who are not confident in front of the camera. You might have to do like multiple takes. Some people, they get nervous when they're doing videos or they get nervous when they're answering difficult questions. So if you struggle with that, then it's going to be difficult. But if you are generally very extroverted, generally very comfortable in front of the camera, then I think it should be fine. Oh, so it's like presenting in front of camera. Do you need to like film any yes, video? Yes, um, we actually had to film the thing and we had to submit it. Oh, I see. Uh, but um, of course, the online task could change at any time. That was just for my batch. Okay. Thank you for sharing. And how long is the bond period? The bond period is actually dependent on the contract and it varies for each scholar. So you will only actually know your bond period when you are when you are already, you know, nearing your final interview. That's only when you have an idea of what your bond is. All right. Um does Gamuda trick about the deadline? I guess yes. Yes. <laughs> Um, does Gamuda also support overseas transfer program from local private uni? From local private uni transfer program. Um, you know what? The good thing about the Gamuda scholarship is that they will consider everything. If you can support, if you can provide reasoning for it. Like, for example, if you want to go on an overseas transfer program, if you can justify it, you can ask for them to cover some of it. But of course, you have to, you know, do an entire entire application. You have to tell them, this is why, this is what I want to join. This is why I want to join. This is why I think it's beneficial. And I hope that you can consider this. And they will take it into consideration. And they'll let you know later on if they support you in doing so. But you can do it. Uh, you just have to apply if you want. Yeah monetary funding for it you know so like they're not going to stop you from doing it 
but if you want monetary funding for it, you have to apply for support. All right. Um, uh, yeah, there is a appre an appreciation from our participants. She, uh, the person say it's very insightful and helpful and your energy is great. So thank you so much for sharing, Vanessa. Um, so I, I guess that's the end. Do you have anything more that you would like to share? No, that's all from me. Thank you so much for having me and thank you for listening, everyone. Thank you. Um, so for now, we'll be moving on to Yaya San Saim Darby Excellence Scholarship Program. So we'll have speaker Lim Yushan, who would present for this one. I'll pass the mic to her. Um, hello, hello guys. Uh, could you hear my voice actually? It's okay. Yes. Ah, okay. All right, sure. So firstly, I would like to thank Tutors in Action for having me today. So today I will be mainly um, sharing with you guys about Yaya San Sandabi Excellence Scholarship. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, so this is a short introduction of myself. I'm Yu Xuan, and I'm pursuing the second year of A-level at KTJ, um, which is College Changku Jafar. So my subject combo is, um, I mean, like my subject combination is triple science, which are physics, chemistry, biology, and mathematics. So it seems like I'm a very science dream student, but surprisingly, I'm going to study planning and real estate in the UK. Okay, next slide, please. So before we delve deeper into the topic, let me do some um, short introduction on Saimdabi Company. So Saimdabi Company is the largest conglomerate in Malaysia, which consists of three subsidiary companies, um, plantation, motors, and also property. So for your information, it's each scholar will be allocated into different company. So like me, I'm assigned under the property company, which means I will be working under the Sandabi property company for the um, coming six years after I graduate from university. Yeah. Okay, so here are some minimum requirements for you to apply this scholarship. So firstly, you have to be Malaysian for sure. And the secondly is um, you must be 25 years old or below. Um, when applying for this scholarship. And for the third one, is the most important one because uh, you have to be, uh, you have to complete either STPM, pre-U foundation or local matriculations, um, which means like any pre-university program with a minimum of CGPA of 3.3 or three A's for A-levels program. What I, why I say this is important because previously they did provide this scholarship for those um, post SPM students, like what I was before. But now apparently they just provide um, this scholarship for those who, who have completed um, pre-university program. So which means like if you want to apply for undergraduate or bachelor degree, you may apply for this scholarship. Okay, so for the first Fourth one is your total monthly gross household income must be 11,000 and below. Okay, so here are the courses offered by them. It covers, so as you can see, it actually covers a majority of courses available in the uni. Uh, like there are actually a lot, a lot. Um, unless you want to study something related to medicine or pharmacy, um, this might not be applicable for them. But then um, I believe that um, from this university list, you can see like there is a lot of, there are a lot of courses that you may apply for, like even law or accounting or like any related to the engineering and stuff like this. Yeah, next slide, please. Okay. So um, what are the accepted universities for this scholarship? So there are two different pathways of excellence scholarship. One is overseas and another one is local program. So for overseas, right, candidates with 
firm or condi conditional offers from any top 50 QS ranking universities are welcome to apply. But personally, I would suggest you to apply for the university first, like um, you apply through, maybe if you want to apply to the UK, you apply through a system called UCAS. And after you get the uh, firm or conditional offers from them, and then only you apply for this scholarship. Okay. And then for the local pathway, you may apply through the UPU, or I think they also accept the direct intake as well. So for local universities are like UPM, USM, UKM, UTM, UDP, and Taylor's University is the only private university that they provide because, but I think um, for Taylor's University, right, uh, they only provide some certain courses like business or management. Yeah, something like this. This is, um, this I'm not that sure about, but like, yeah, you guys may check it out on the website. Next slide, please. Thank you. Okay, um, so for Bon Lang, okay, so upon graduating from the uni, you have to serve a minimum of six years for overseas program, while three years for local program at a Sandabi company. Um, and six years are actually not that long for overseas university because they actually like pay a lot of for your studies. And three years is also like, I feel like this is a very great opportunity to explore yourself in the company. Yeah. And the fees cover um, basically everything. It's like tuition fees, monthly allowance, computer allowance, and settling and clothing allowance. But this is only applicable for um, overseas scholars. So yeah, you basically, you don't have to worry anything about your financial problem and so on. So, um, basically, the fees will cover everything that you need. Yeah, next slide, please. Okay, so this is the pathway with YSD after you get this scholarship. So upon getting this scholarship, right, um, all YSD scholars will be automatically involved in a program called YSD Thrive, which is a leadership um, training program, which aims to tailor your soft skills and you will have an access to e-learning platform, volunteering opportunities, and mentorship and internships at Sandabi Company. So it is a golden chance for you to actually explore yourself in the leadership pathway, which I think is, um, is worth it, is totally worth it. Like uh, upon like after I get this scholarship, right, I had the chance to involve in um, different talk, like they will invite some speakers to share themselves, like with the experience in working in Sandabi and so on with us. And they will also have some training programs, like online training programs, but I think they're going to do some like physical activities um, in real life. Yeah, but I haven't gone to any any of the physical activities yet, but I think probably soon, yeah. Okay, so, um, yeah, and then after that, like what I said before, you will be studying in the, <coughs> sorry, top units in UK, US, and Malaysia, and other countries as well, <coughs> as long as the university is listed in the top 50 ranking university. Um, this is only for the overseas program, but like for Malaysia is the university that I mentioned just now. Yeah. And then it is pretty much the same as the career at Sandabi. You have to serve like three to six year bonds. And what's special about Sandabi is um, you have the chance to work in our overseas branch, is, uh, which means like Sandabi Plantation and Sandabi uh, motto, they actually provide this opportunity for their workers to work overseas. So yeah, this is a very good opportunity for you. Next slide, please. <clears throat> okay, so here comes to the most important part, which is the application process. So um, for stage one, is basically you need to tell them how talented you are 
and why should they choose you to proceed to stage two? So you have to submit the required documents and choose your course preference. So um, I personally advise you all to search up all the courses that they provide and really, really think through like which course you want to study in the future because after you secure this scholarship, right, you, um, there's like quite a, quite a small like probability for you to change the course yeah so just be firm of your course preference and so on so and then for the third one is you have to fill out the activities and achievements so for this one is you have to list out all the activities and any extracurricular achievement that you have done before so there might there might be some limitations for them like <clears throat> maybe they just want you to list out like five of the um achievement that you have so just list out the top ones yeah and then for stage two <clears throat> it's basically the online ability test and okay i'm sorry <clears throat> sorry okay and then you um for stage two right is more about like the personality numerical and logical thinking test so don't just don't forget about your basic math skills like calculating percentage or like any um, plus minus like the basic math skills you would be able to uh, you wouldn't be able to complete this online ability test if you don't have this um, like basic math skills yeah so for stage three it's basically a whole day assessment where they give, will give you two case studies for like each for group and individual interview so basically, you will need to do a five to 10 minutes presentation based on the um, case or scenario that they give you. So it might seem a bit complicated as you will be exposed to the company related things, but no worries, just simplify it as if like you are solving the problem um, you encountered like in the planning of school event. And with the problem they give, you give like the long-term and short-term solution and the reason why you say this solution and all. Yeah. And then there are like group assessment and individual assessment. So for group assessment, they want to know whether you are a team player. A team player doesn't mean that you have to be the one talking all the way, but you you will also have to give chance to other people to talk as well. So, um, but the most important is don't be too passive. You have to voice out your opinion. Then only the judges will know um, what you're thinking about. Okay, so for individual assessment, right? Basically you have, it is the same thing as the group assessment, but you have to present it in the individual, like in, in, by individual. So you walk them through like your thought process and provide them some statistical analysis. Um, for my case, right, I got a document with like um, a case study of the customer survey of the company. And they asked me about like the problem and the solution that uh, what is my problem and the solution and all. So like I had to prepare a PowerPoint, a short PowerPoint to explain about that, that to them. That, yeah. And then after you um, successfully enter the final stage, which is like the final interview, it's a competency-based interview with the HR and CEO of Sysdabi. So actually they will ask you more of like, like personal questions. Um, like, like you also have to search about what what does the sign up do, but but at the same time, I think they ask more online questions, specific questions like okay, okay, for example, like for the first first question, it's like what kind of job you're looking for, like like what kind of job you're looking for, 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 like what kind of job
um, for, for this application and, and just, just no need to miss any required documents because um, um, if, if you miss this, like, like you miss the deadline or you miss the documents, it will, will be like missing the chance from, from securing this scholarship. And in important timelines is, oh yeah, so what's special about San Dabi is they actually open their uh, their application quite early is during April to May. Like um, this, this is where they open the application form, and it, throughout the May to June or July, which is like this period, um, they will have assessments and interviews. So yeah, so like I think probably for those who applying for this scholarship, they will have like the assessment and interviews now. And for August is the announcement of successful scholarship recipients. So after you get this scholarship right, they will have a briefing again on like uh, what you should prepare for your university and what you should do for applying um, visa if you're going for overseas scholarship. And, and like for local, maybe like they they will require some documents for them to like apply to the university and so on. Yeah, next slide please. Okay, so what are the expectations from them? Um, here is some um, typing error. It should be minimum CGP of 3.3 because 3A is for the um, pre-university program like A-levels for me. So. Um, after you get this scholarship, right, you have to maintain a consistent academic process of um, CGPA 3.3, which means um, you have to achieve CGPA 3.3 for each semester. Yeah, and then um, just ignore the comply to a strict university leave because this is um, what we should do for the pre-university students. Yeah, next like this. Okay, so here are some frequent asked questions. So a lot of people ask me, like, what type of scholar is YSD looking for? So basically, they are looking for like the all-rounder and um, all-rounder scholars, which means you are not only good in academic, but at the same time, you are um, actively involved in the co-curricular activities or any leadership events and so on. So. Secondly, you have to be clear of your goals. Um, this is especially, uh, sorry, this is especially important in final interview because they want to know whether your goal is aligned with Simdabi or not. So like try to relate your personal goals with the company's goal and projects and all. Yeah. And the third one is self-motivated. So yeah, you, you might face some like, um, discouragement or something, but just be persistent and yeah, be persistent and be self motivated all the time. Okay, and second one is how to prepare for the selection process. Obviously, you have to work for those grades. Like, um, like um, if you want to secure this scholarship, right, you must have like a minimum of uh three a's for your a levels or like a good result for your matriculation so and then the second one is be active in any ecas ecas means extracurricular activities and volunteering activities so um because i i studied um government school before and i joined a club uh, a uniform body club which they which like i'm i involved in a lot of like leadership programs and also camping and stuff. So this is actually quite a plus point for me to um, to bring it up during the interview. Yeah. And third one is build a nice CV. Yeah. Um, you have to bear in mind that they need your resume or like a CV um, during the application process. So do prepare and search up for like the template even in there's a lot of template in Canva and so on. So just build a nice CV. And then you must read on Sindabi. So let's say you the course you apply for this scholarship is like, um, for me, it's like 
planning and real estate, right? So I know I will be um, assigned under the San Papi property. So I read more on the San Papi property, like what projects are they undergoing and like um, what what is their aim and so on. So like after I know this, I can like bring it up uh, during the interview and know and let them know like um, why should I why should they choose me for this scholarship and like what is the benefit and so on yeah and then the last one is just be honest and confident and don't be panicked during the interview next slide please okay so what to expect after getting the scholarship you expect a fulfilling university life and because like the university life is pretty much um, a very interesting one, like no matter for local or for overseas program. So I think it is very fulfilling because you don't have to worry about your financial problem. Like it basically settles all your financial burden. Yeah. And the second one is be mentally prepared to jump out of your comfort zone. So, <clears throat> so because in order to maintain your academic achievement, right, so sometimes you will feel a little bit stressed and like um, you have to uh, force yourself to like jump out of your comfort zone and like to try different things at the same time. So yeah, but this is a good opportunity for you to learn and for you to like grow up. Yeah, as well. So for the third one is a great platform to grow and develop like what I mentioned before and the last one is meeting more like-minded and outstanding people so this scholarship um, can actually expose you to different type of scholars so you will see like a lot of excellent scholars out, outside like and you can like um, communicate with them and meet like more like-minded and outstanding people yeah so it's a very good chance for you. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, so here are some advices from me. While you are doing the um, scholarship interview or like the assessment activities and so on, don't overthink. So stay focused on your locus of control um, because like some of the candidates, they tend to overthink and worry too much. So it might affect your um, interview performance. So just don't overthink and be confident and be steady, like be steady while doing your interview. Yeah. And second one is the scholarship application process will be a bit stressful and tedious, but you will benefit a lot because like you should take it as a learning pathway since the process is more important than the result, right? So no matter how, like no matter what is the outcome or what is the result of the um, of the interview, you will still be able to learn some, like some maybe um, interview techniques from it. Yeah. And remember you are awesome. Okay. Everyone is good and nice. Okay. Next slide, please. Okay. So, um, like, I would like to share some, like, personal experience with you guys. Um, my personal experience, like, is kind of same with Vanessa, actually, because I also met some technical issues during the online assessment. Like, my line was so bad and my voice wasn't clear enough for them to hear. But at that moment, I switched from, like, laptop to my phone and I think I kind of messed up the assessment, but I was still trying to reconnect and get back to my own track. But it was still fine in the end, I guess. Yeah. And like um, for the scholarship application process is quite, um, it's quite challenging and tough for me because um, like for your information, I come from a government school right and like i'm a fully mandarin speaker no matter at home or at school so like i met some problem or like some challenges in like speaking a fluent a very fluent english or some some kind of like this so like i will i wasn't that confident at first to like um to like meet this kind of like scholarship like to do these scholarship applications. So like the overall process was like 
kind of hard for me. But I guess um, you should just um, try, like keep trying and like try different ways to improve your, um, like to improve your, your like English skills or like speaking skills because there are many platforms like YouTube or like website that you can search up for. So it's like, uh, so just take it as a opportunity for you to learn. And yeah, so it can be competitive and you may feel discouraged sometime, but think it as um, like the outcome that you got is like totally worth it because you can get this scholarship and study in university without any um, financial burden as well. Yeah, something like this. So yeah, I think that's the end for my presentation. Um, is there any question? Thank you, Yushan. Thank you for sharing your personal experience with us. So we'll have some questions. We can only apply for this scholarship once we get the offer letter from university. Um, actually, you can you can also apply for this scholarship before you got the offer letter. But I think they would prefer, um, like because in the end they would want you to have a firm or conditional offer from the university, right? So I would suggest you all to apply for the university first, and then after that only um apply for this scholarship, or maybe you can do it at the same time as well. Like you apply for this scholarship, but at the same time you also apply for the university. So like, um, when they ask you during the interview, and then you can say, oh, you got like you got which offer from like which university? Yeah. All right. I hope that answers your question. And is it too late if I'm not active in extracurricular activity or don't have any leadership role? Um, it is not too late for sure because. Um, if you don't have any experience in like ECA or leadership role, you can also um, you can also mention about like your opinion on this scholarship or like why you want to apply, like why you need this scholarship for you to study in the university. Yeah, so you can focus on other um, other points instead of like the ECAs or leadership role, but. Um, if you want, you may like participate in any like any like uh like leadership. leadership. It's not like leadership role. Maybe some volunteering because there are a lot of volunteering op opportunities out there. Okay. So like just try to find some uh, volunteering opportunities for you to like explore yourself on this perspective. All right. Next question. Can you share more? of your case study sessions both the group and individual one all right so for group um for group assessments right it's like it's like it is basically like i got the okay because for my case i have only one teammate but normally they would assign like more than one it's like maybe two to three teammates of you and then um, for mine, I I had the sessions online because that time was like during the MCO period. But for now, I think they will probably back to the physical assessment. Yeah, and then basically it's like they will share you of the case studies, like like maybe maybe um wait um because that was like two years ago, so it's a bit blurry for me now. Uh, yeah. Okay, so it's like it's like they ask us to plan an event. For example, like um, they ask us to plan an agenda about what 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 we should choose or like which package or like which budget we should choose for an event, like an annual company event or something like this. Yeah, and this is like it's pretty much like this, and then you have to discuss um with your teammates on like which kind of budget because they will give you a limitation of the budget right so you have to calculate like do some math um on like calculating what is the like what is the budget limitation and how many percentage that um you will have a benefit from this budget as well yep and then 
is basically like this, I guess, for group assessment. And for individual assessment, it's, it's more or less uh, on the customer survey. And you will also have to provide statistical analysis. Like, it's like um, you have to calculate like uh, how many percent of the customer um, on, it's like they don't, they don't like like the this kind of like system and how many percent is like feel like this system is like benefit to them and something like this and then you have to provide reasons like why they don't like about this system and so on yeah so it really depends on the documents or the scenario that they give you so i think it might be differ from my batch because like the question is like differs every year like it's different for every year yeah, so it's basically like this. All right, thank you for your sharing. And uh, last question, um, can you share about what the degree you're interested in is about? Oh, okay. So um, the planning and real estate is more about like the financial investment, like the finance investment on the property. Yeah, because at first, right, I. I was kind of interested on the landscape architecture for my and then I applied for landscape architecture. But after that, due to some individual reasons, I changed from landscape architecture to planning and real estate, which is um kind of like same, like kind of similar with the um landscape architecture, but it's like more like a theory based of like planning and real estate and something like this and then <clears throat> i found that like it was quite interesting because the real estate um like because i'm studying like the science part is like biology chemistry and physics right and then after that i found it quite interesting in the economics and like the real estate thing so that's the reason why i want to um study further on this field yeah like i prefer the econs like economic things rather than the science like the biology and the things about this yeah and then for planning and real, real estate from what i've searched before it's like <clears throat> you will basically learn about the gis and then like um some some sketch up skills and also like some programming skills about the about the real estate and like the planning part so you'll use like a system called gis to design like to design about the town structure is something like this so it's quite niche i would say like the cost is quite niche but i found it interesting so how are civil engineering and planning related so civil engineering is more on the engineering, like more on the structure part, I would say. Like planning is more on the um, general, general structure, general things. Like basically you have a blueprint of like the town planning first. And then civil engineering is more like the specific stuff. Like maybe they study more about like the, um, the, the structure of like the the buildings and all yeah i'm not so sure about like what is civil engineering studying about but yeah this is from what i know all right thank you so much yushan i think now we'll head for the final q a session um emily has left because of her uh, personal schedule so we're very honored to have yushan and Vanessa, that you would like to voice out, you can, you can drop down here. First of all, um, all of the speakers, is it okay to me to apply for a scholarship if I don't have that strong comment in English? Uh, you should want to share this. Yeah, I think it's fine. Because, like, what I've had before, I think they read the interview in my English versus so fluent enough for them, then. but as long as you can understand what they're speaking, it's totally fine. It's, 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 it's okay for you to have some, some grammar mistake in, in your, your, um, in your, your like, like, case in, in your sentence all, and then you will use some time to, to like, update it. So just, 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 just treat it as like a, a 
dating conversation with your parents. But, but make sure that, like, like before the interview, you try to um, converse, like make yourself familiar in, in speaking English first, so that, so that it would help you better in the interview. Yeah. Yeah. All right, all right. Thank, thank you for my advice from you. How about that, Vanessa? Did you encounter any of your friends like having not so great? say that there is nothing wrong with fighting because I actually think that having fluency in English it is a privilege it shows it actually shows privilege in the education that you've received and as long as you are able to be genuine during the interview I think that it's fine especially if if they ask you about um, maybe your flaws or your weaknesses right I think that is completely okay to directly say, I actually struggle with this. Um, I struggle with fluency in English, but I am a very strong communicator and I'm working on my English fluency by doing this and doing that because it shows that you you plan how to tackle this problem. All right. Thank you so much, Vanessa. Another question on how do each speakers answer the question? Do you have any question for us from the interviewer? Um, any of you would like to share? How do you answer? Uh, um, Yushan, do you want to go first? Um, yeah, sure. Okay, so um, for me, I think I asked the interviewers about, okay, for me, I think my questions was kind of special because um, I asked nothing related about my field or like the study of my interest, something like that. But then I asked them about the, um, like how is, like what is a day like being a HR or a CEO of the company? Yeah. So, so basically, when I ask this question, they are kind of surprised of that. But I think it is quite, um, it is quite okay to ask this question because, um, like, since like we like during the interview, I have already asked them like um, the questions about my, um, uh, my field or something like this. Then, um, so like. In the end of the interview, I asked them like, um, "How is it like being a HR of like CEO of the Santa B? So, um, is it okay? Like, I mean, is it doable or something?" And then I try to make it like um, become like a friendly conversation with them. Yeah. Okay. How yeah, about that's very special. How about <laughs> Vanessa? I think that Yushan's um, approach is actually very smart because if you can convince someone that she will subconsciously like you more. Yeah. <laughs> so it is very smart. Um, for me, I actually, there are two questions that I usually go to. Um, one of it is, is there any reservations that you may have about me that I can address right now? Because um, during the interview process, they already have like thoughts or perceptions of you. Um, like if they like you, but they have certain things that they're not sure about, it gives them the chance to ask you now directly. Then it also gives you the opportunity to explain about the things that they might be concerned about. Um, the second question that I ask is usually if they have the time to give me feedback on the sessions so that I can improve in the future. These are the two questions that I ask, like, usually. All right. Thank you so much for sharing. And another question uh, to Yushan. What are the professions the planning and real estate degree can get you into? Um, basically, this planning and real estate can get me into the professions like project management team or like the... um town planner you can be a town planner with this professions because um for me right if i study in the uk i will have like the a pre like the certified certified town um planning 
like the certificate of that and then i can also like use it in malaysia i think but i think in order to be the former um town planner in malaysia you have to um go for like different license of like different courses and which you have to search this up in the future but for me because i know that um i'm i will still work in standard big property right like after i graduate so i would probably go into like um some project management stuff about like the real estate or like maybe the real estate team in like the investment or something yeah i know some of the graduate from this field they also go into the investment banking which is quite um which is quite like competitive nowadays like quite demanding now nowadays so i think um this is a very good opportunity if you can get into the invest investment banking area yeah all right uh the last question is on uh, interview tips tell me about yourself how would you answer this one vanessa would you like to share first um sure i think the key point is to know what you are going to say and honestly this is a very common question you should you should write down what you want to say and you should practice it um don't ramble so usually you can say your name how old you are um what is your education background so far um as well as what you are interested in so if you are interested in for example for me it was sustainability and environmental science and then i also mentioned that in the future i hope to be this and then i tell them at the moment my time is dedicated to this and this and an interesting fact about yourself and it's a pleasure to meet you very straightforward how about you shen um yeah i agree with vanessa as well it's just like um tell more tell them more about um what you are interested in like for example you are applying for a certain courses right and then why you want to apply for these courses and so on but for me i add a additional point where um i say like i try to make it like as interesting as possible like for my introduction because introduction is like you giving a first impression to them right so Basically, it's like I say, like, oh, although like I look like very ladylike, but actually I'm a tough person. And why am I a tough person? Because I, um, because I participated in like many camping and stuff. And then like, and from here they will ask me more about like why, um, why I'm so interested in like camping and what did I do during the camping and stuff. Yeah. So, what you want to bring out, like. Because you will have something in mind that what you want to bring out during the interview, right? But they may not be asking um, this during the interview. So, so you have to, so your answer has to like direct them to ask them. Uh, sorry, direct them to ask you about these kind of like topics. So yeah, this is one of the techniques that I use during the interview. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much for sharing. Um. The last question, uh, I don't think is related to uh, the scholarship and due to some time constraint, Yushin, would you like to like share your contact to them to ask yeah, you sure. this question? Sure. Yeah. Okay. So you can direct the question to her. And um, sorry, I will type my email and also Instagram in the chat box, and you guys may contact me there, okay? Yeah, sure. Um, all right, then. thank you so much. And in the meantime, I'll share about the committee recruitment. Uh, so before that, thank you so much for Yushan and Vanessa and also Emily who has left for sharing uh, to us about your thoughts and experience. And I would like to invite all the participants to uh, like give a thumbs up or to thank them for sharing and preparing the slides. That's so much effort. Yeah, thank you so much. And uh, in the meantime, I'd like to share about the committee recruitment. It is happening uh, 
and tutors in action and we'll have the last day today is the last day of us recruiting and we'll have all this positions open for applications so if you're interested to join our family don't hesitate to scan the qr code and um, fill in the application form to um, apply for this uh, positions and join us and so before ending we would like to ask for all the participants and speakers to um, open your cam and to take a group pictures together. All right. Ready? <clears throat> Three, two, one, smile. Another one. Three, two, one, smile. All right, thank you so much for the speakers and also all the participants for joining us and being a part with the workshop today. Thank you so much and hope you have 